For probiotics to be effective, they actually need to reach their target destination. When it comes to vaginal health, suppositories inserted into the vaginal canal deliver probiotics directly where they're needed. But Euro isn't a vaginal suppository. It's taken orally. So that raises an important question. If you're swallowing it, how is it supposed to benefit your vagina? The honest answer, it probably doesn't. Just like your gut, the vagina has its own community of bacteria that help keep it healthy. A well-balanced vaginal microbiome plays a crucial role in maintaining the right pH and keeping harmful bacteria and yeast in check. Certain strains of lactobacillus bacteria, for example, produce lactic acid, which help create an acidic environment that can prevent infections like bacterial vaginosis and yeast infections. Let's break down the probiotic strains found in Euro and see if they actually have any real impact on vaginal health, whether taken as a suppository or swallowed. Also, if you want more supplement reviews like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Lactobacillus acidophilus is often studied for its role in vaginal health, particularly in treating bacterial vaginosis, or BV. Research shows that when applied directly to the vagina via suppository or tablets, it may help restore balance and improve BV symptoms. One study found that using vaginal tablets containing 100 million to 1 billion CFUs of lactobacillus acidophilus led to higher BV cure rates compared to placebo. Even at a lower dose of 10 million CFUs daily, another study reported better cure rates than placebo. For vaginal yeast infections or vaginal candidiasis, the evidence is weaker. One study found that women who had just finished a week of oral fluconazole, a common antifungal medication, and then used the lactobacillus acidophilus vaginal suppository had a slight decrease in reinfection risk. But what about taking lactobacillus acidophilus orally? Well, that's where things get a little disappointing. There haven't been any human trials specifically testing lactobacillus acidophilus on its own in pill form for these conditions. The closest evidence we have comes from a study where people ate yogurt enriched with lactobacillus acidophilus for two months and found a slight reduction in the risk of BV, but no effect on yeast infections. However, since yogurt contains a mix of probiotics, dairy, and other nutrients, it's unclear whether the benefit came from lactobacillus acidophilus itself self or just yogurt in general. Another study looked at a probiotic supplement that included lactobacillus acidophilus along with several other strains. The findings suggested it might help lower the risk of BV, but because multiple probiotics were involved, we can't say for sure if lactobacillus acidophilus was responsible. Furthermore, another study on healthy women found that consuming lactobacillus acidophilus by mouth didn't lead to colonization in the vagina. The bottom line, lactobacillus acidophilus seems helpful for vaginal health, but mostly when used intravaginally. When taken orally, there's little solid evidence that it does much for BV or yeast infections. Lactobacillus rhamnosus and lactobacillus retruri are often studied together as part of a specific probiotic combination. Lactobacillus rhamnosus GR1 and lactobacillus retruri RC14. Interestingly, this combo is usually taken orally. Some studies suggest this combination may help reduce the risk of urinary tract infections or UTIs. For example, postmenopausal women who took it daily for a year had significantly fewer symptomatic UTIs. However, for BV, the research is less promising. Studies show that this combo does not significantly alter vaginal microbiota, improve cure rates, or prevent recurrence. Similarly, pregnant women taking these probiotics didn't see any changes in in BV rates or vaginal flora compared to placebo. Using these probiotics intravaginally doesn't seem to offer much more benefit either. In one study, women with BV who had already completed standard treatment and then used a vaginal suppository containing lactobacillus rhamnosus saw no improvement in cure rates. Another study tested an intravaginal probiotic blend, including lactobacillus rhamnosus, for preventing yeast infections after antibiotic use, but it didn't reduce infection risk. So while this specific probiotic combo might help with UTIs, there's not much evidence supporting it for BV or yeast infections. 
Lactobacillus fermentum has been studied for vaginal and urinary health, but only in combination with other probiotics, never on its own. So while some studies show benefits, it's unclear if Lactobacillus fermentum itself is doing the heavy lifting or if it's the combination of probiotics. For BV, research suggests that taking an oral probiotic mix containing lactobacillus fermentum alongside standard treatment may help keep patients symptom-free for longer compared to standard treatment alone. For yeast infections, a small study found that women who had already completed standard antifungal treatment and then used an intravaginal probiotic mix, including lactobacillus fermentum, had a slight reduction in infection rates. And for UTIs, a small trial showed that vaginal suppositories containing lactobacillus fermentum helped reduce the risk of UTIs compared to a placebo. Let's talk about the prebiotics in Euro. The formula includes xylo-oligosaccharides, a type of fiber similar to fructo-oligosaccharides, which act as food for beneficial gut bacteria helping them thrive. The idea behind adding prebiotics to a probiotic supplement is that they might give the probiotics a boost by providing them with nutrients right away. But in reality, this isn't usually necessary. When you take probiotics with a meal, the fiber in your food naturally feeds the good gut bacteria, doing the same job as any added prebiotics. Some people argue that prebiotics and supplements are useful if you're taking probiotics on an empty stomach. But since food lingers in your digestive system for quite a while, there's generally enough leftover nutrients for probiotics to feed on, unless you're fasting for extended periods. So while prebiotics from dietary fiber are great for gut health, the small amount included in a supplement like Euro is unlikely to make a significant difference. Overall, urovaginal probiotics does contain some probiotic strains that have been studied for vaginal health, but the evidence is mixed. More importantly, most of the benefits seen in research come from intravaginal use through using vaginal suppositories, not taking them orally like you would with uro. That's not to say oral probiotics have no effect on vaginal health. In theory, bacteria taken orally can pass through the digestive system and migrate to the vagina via the perineal area. However, as we've seen, the human studies would suggest that this process has minimal impact on vaginal health, and direct vaginal application is far more effective. The strongest evidence for oral probiotics benefiting vaginal health comes from this specific combination of Lactobacillus rhamnosus GR1 and Lactobacillus retruri RC14, which may slightly reduce the risk of UTIs. Euro contains both Lactobacillus rhamnosus and Lactobacillus retruri, but it doesn't specify whether these are the exact GR1 and RC14 strains. If they're generic versions, they may not offer the same benefits. Regardless, even in the best case scenario, taking Euro might slightly lower UTI risk, but it's unlikely to have a significant impact on other vaginal conditions like BV or yeast infections. Now you might be wondering, could you just use Euro as a vaginal suppository instead and just kind of stick the pill up there? Technically, yes. Some people insert oral probiotic capsules directly or open them up, mix the powder with water and use it as a douche. However, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Oral probiotics aren't designed for vaginal use and the capsule or filler ingredients could cause irritation. For safety and effectiveness, it's best to choose probiotics specifically formulated for vaginal application to avoid unnecessary irritation or even worsening of the condition. Euro vaginal probiotics costs around $30 per month, but for that price, you may just be getting a mix of generic probiotics with unclear effectiveness for vaginal health. If you're looking for the clinically studied GR1 and RC14 combination, you can buy them separately for about the same price. But if you really want to improve vaginal health, vaginal suppositories would likely be far more effective, but they come at a higher price, around $60 per month. When it comes to improving vaginal health, I'm giving it a C. While their strains have been studied for vaginal health, most benefits are from intravaginal use, not oral use. Rating by cost, I'm giving it a C. It's moderately expensive for a generic multi-strain probiotic. Rating for safety, I'm giving it a B. The strains used are unlikely to be of much cause for concern. Overall rating, I'm giving a C. 
it might be helpful for reducing the risk of UTIs, but their strains are hidden behind a proprietary blend and you'd be better off just getting the actual specific strains that have shown benefit for the same price. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. Have you tried Euro Vaginal Probiotics? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and leave me a like. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date and share this video with some you know who use the info.